And what I'll do is I'll start things off by installing it. So I'll grab this and I'll chuck it into my Drupal site. Now I do have a Drupal site set up locally. It's just a stock standard Drupal site. The only thing I've done is I've installed Drush. That's about it. So let's go ahead and download it and just give that a second or two to a download. And then if we go back here, let's close this tab. Let's close this tab, it's no longer required. Come along in here, search for Gutenberg and you will see two modules. The Gutenberg editor is the main one. There is an example block module, which I'll show you later on in the advanced section of this video. So let's go ahead and install it. And now that we have the module installed, we need to configure it and set it up on a particular content type. Now I do remember, well, looking at the issue queue and I do think that the module only supports nodes or content types at this point. So you can't really set it up for, um, what is it? Taxonomy terms or something. So it can only really work for, uh, content types like article, basic page, or any type of custom content type you are using. So to set it up, go to structure, content types, and then click on edit. And let's set it up on the article content type. And then if you scroll down, you should see Gutenberg experience. If you can't see it, make sure the module is installed. If the module is installed, clear the Drupal cache and see if that fixes your problem. Then to enable it, all you need to do you simply check enable Gutenberg experience. Now you can just save the form and be done with it, but let me just show you a few options here. So from the template section, you can modify a few um, editor specific things. And this is more of advanced stuff here, but the section that I'm most interested in, and also you, you, you would be most interested in as a Drupal user is this section down here allowed Drupal blocks. Well, if we click on allow Gutenberg blocks, these are the standard blocks that come with the editor. So you can turn off and switch off whichever ones you want. So, so you have like mandatory ones such as paragraph, heading, list, list item, but then you can switch off if you, you know, if you know you're not going to use group, separator, text column, verse, video, you can go in there and switch them off. It's up to you. And then on the right here, you have all these embeds. So things like, I don't know if you can even embed Twitter stuff these days, or sorry, X. So you may want to turn this off. Um, and this just gives you the ability to really fine tune and control um, what blocks are, are available to editors, especially if your editors, you know, some, sometimes you can get, get a bit overwhelming if you, if you have too much choice. So if we scroll down, then we get to the allowed Drupal blocks. Now this is where you can actually specify and allow specific Drupal blocks. So they can be embedded in, in the editor and they can be reused just like any piece of content, which is actually pretty, pretty powerful when you, when you think about it. And it becomes even powerful when you use it with, with media, with the media module. Um, so here you've got breadcrumb messages and you could, if you really want to, you can write custom code. You can implement your own um, plugin, sorry, your own block using a plugin. So a block plugin, and then you can implement whatever you want. And then you can come along in here and then just allow, allow your custom block to be embedded. And then if we scroll down here, we can actually allow inline blocks. So you can go ahead and create any type of content block, now, by default, Drupal, the standard installation profile gives you basic block, but you can go ahead and create your own blocks with any type of custom fields and then allow them to be embedded into uh, the editor. So you could do it with paragraphs. You could have a block field attached to a block type. No, sorry, a block, no, paragraph field attached to a block type. There's many things you can do. Um, yeah, I'll be curious to see what the UI looks like. It'll be pretty squashed, but it can be done, which is actually pretty cool.